Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, hi, my name is Stella. I make lighthearted content all about my life with chronic illness and disability. And sometimes I make videos of whatever takes my fancy, like today, although this one was highly requested. So without further ado, let's get into the video. going to be sharing with you my beloved crystal collection insert wind chime effect hi oh this one wanted to join in if you don't know we have a new kitten called coco she's on her zoomies right now look how good she is look how good you are <laughs> she's quiet now <laughs> First of all, I just want to say nobody needs this amount of crystals. I know that. Nobody does. However, I'm an avid collector. I love everything to do with astrology, tarot cards, spirituality, the occult, and crystals just naturally falls into that. Anyone who is interested in those topics typically likes crystals as well. Also, they have healing properties. There's a bit of debate about whether they are healing or not, but somebody like myself who has disabilities and chronic illnesses, I like to try my hand at everything before I knock it. Even if it is placebo, is good enough for me, right? Whatever works for you makes you happy. They also emit energy. So a bit like plants, they come from the earth, they grow in the earth, they're mined out of the earth and they emit energy. And because we have two cats now who both like to chew things we can't have plants can we little one we can't have plants so um not only can it be toxic to them it also kills the plants well, what did you just she just climbed down my back <laughs> bear in mind i don't only have this shelf I have crystals dotted all over my house. I have it in the hallway. I have another cabinet in the dining room. I have them in my bathrooms. I have quite a lot of crystals in the bedroom and in the hallway upstairs. So this is not exclusively my collection. I'm gonna start on this side because this is Chris's favorite. This is Labradorite. And what I love about this crystal is when you move it, it flashes different colors. This is a green slash blue. It's got a fun little story behind it, as do pretty much all crystals. I don't know all of them, but I know this one. And basically it was believed that the Norse gods had a fight and during their battle, lots of the energy and the thunder and the light that they were using got trapped into the stones. And that's why it is believed that this is the stone of magic. And a lot of people also say it resembles the Aura Borealis. <laughs> How do you say it? Aurora Borealis. Aura Borealis. Next one is Ocean Jasper. This Ocean Jasper is a true Ocean Jasper. Most Ocean Jaspers on the market are actually what are known as Sea Jasper. Ocean Jasper is the mine it was first discovered and the mine has actually now closed down. This is from that mine and it was mined in the early 1900s and the properties of ocean jasper are calming a bit like the ocean we also have rainbow amethyst now we all know amethyst this is an amethyst i'm not going to take this one out because it is pretty heavy but i'll add an insert rainbow amethyst comes out of uruguay it's the only place you can get it rainbow amethyst comes in all sorts of colors and we all know green is my favorite color and I do love a heart carving, it's not for everybody. But what I love about it is green is the colour of the heart chakra and this is a heart shape so it just seemed perfect to me. And it's got a sugar coating, which sh a sugar coating means it's got like extra sparkles on the top. That's how it's naturally grown, it is pretty insane. This crystal is what's known as Vivianite and it's actually really cool because what helps it to grow is phosphite and phosphite is found in places where there's dead bodies so you'll often find this crystal growing around there and as you can see it's green although some parts of it do have blue on it malachite is one of my absolute favorites this crystal comes out of congo although you can also get it in russia you can imagine congo and russia both have wars that can be extremely unethical to actually source 
and so you want to be careful when you're buying your crystals that you're buying them from a seller who is ethical and works with families for example because there are still people who live in those countries who need to make a living not actual big mainstream companies who don't care about their workers so for me I'm really passionate about buying my crystals ethically and that usually means it comes with a higher price point but it's just something to consider this is apophyllite it's actually green apophyllite and green apophyllite is really rare green apophyllite only comes out of India well apophyllite in general only comes out of India the green color is the most rare so naturally I had to have it and what I just took off was this carving this is a seahorse carving and this is moss agate well that I would say it's more tree agate but this is what's known as moss agate and this is supposed to have grounding energy it's supposed to make you feel more at one with nature a long long time ago when these crystals were being discovered people actually thought these were bits of moss that were getting trapped in the crystal and then later on down the line when it was tested they found out it's not this is another one that i really love this is a emerald now you don't often see emeralds unless they're in jewelry but this is emerald in matrix and it's half polished half raw and just a tip i'll give you guys is that if you are planning on starting a crystal collection i would suggest starting with raw crystals because anything raw is always going to be cheaper than something polished i also have tremolite and what i love about it is it looks like watermelon or the outside of a watermelon this is what's known as an obelisk because it has four sides it's a four-sided tower whereas most towers have five sides this is also tremolite i had to obviously get it in a sphere because it looks like watermelon tremolite is extremely rare and crystals that come out of india can also be unethical because you'll find lots of children mining and they're getting paid silly things like 2p a day so you want to make sure again you're buying from an ethical source this is fluorite oh my gosh fluorite is one of my absolute favorite crystals this particular fluorite is a special one yttrium fluorite and yttrium fluorite comes out of Mexico. Most fluorite comes out of China and the best fluorite typically comes out of Beijing. China is another place you have to be wary of. What it's known for is the fact that it's pastel colored. So you can see the green goes into the purple and it's got this distinctive banding. But why I love fluorite and why I'm so drawn to it is because it's really good for balance, both emotionally and physically. So naturally I have balance issues with POTS and EDS and all my other conditions. Co. and also mental balance so if you're depressed or low mood or have seasonal affective disorder or you're going through a stressful time having fluorite is incredible and bear in mind like this is massive but you can also get little tumbles or you can get bracelets which i don't know how i didn't even think to talk about it and what i love about bracelets is that they're usually quite affordable this is it's a nice way to carry your crystals on you and you can get the rarer crystals but for the fraction of the price so like for example this is rhodochrosite it's a beautiful crystal rhodochrosite is extremely rare this is thulite might not look like much however thulite only comes from one place in the world and that's norway this is charoite which is one of my absolute favorite crystals it only comes out of russia with the situation in russia you can imagine how difficult that is to buy right now and this is kunzite only comes out of pakistan so these are all rare crystals that i'm wearing this one is what's known as purple moss agate and moss agate is typically green this is a typical moss agate i really love this sphere it's absolutely gorgeous and this is the purple version so you can see it's the same stone however it's got purple in it you can see there's green at the bottom but it is predominantly purple the veining in it which is extremely rare so naturally i had to get this this is what's known as thunder bay amethyst and it only comes from one place in the world which is canada and if you look closely it's got flecks of red in it and i love it so much but I got it in a tiny piece here. Like, look at this banding. You can see the red in there, so beautiful. And I got a sphere up here, 
which has this like yellowness to it. Uh oh. And you can see the red there as well. So pretty. So I've just got Chris to come a bit closer so you can see the back parts. <laughs> These are going to be extremely difficult for me to take out, but I just wanted to show you some of the other rarer small crystals. This is phosphosiderite and a bit like vivianite, this one here, it's predominantly phosphate. I just absolutely love the deep purple colour with the flecks of gold in it. These are bits of iron and yeah, I just think it looks beautiful. I also have gem lapidolite. Oh, lapidolite is such a great crystal because it contains lithium. And if you know anything about lithium, it is used in medication for depression and anti-anxiety. So it's said if you have lipidolite, it's going to be really good for anti-anxiety. So I have loads of lipidolite, guys. I have a huge lipidolite tower here. This is unicorn stone. Oh, let me take this one out. What I love about unicorn stone is that it's got bits of pink tourmaline, smoky quartz and lipidolite in it. So it has all the different properties of all the crystals put together. So smoky quartz is grounding. Pink tourmaline is all about self-love and love in general. And lipidolite is anti-anxiety, calming energy. And I just love that. It also has quartz in it. And quartz is known as the master healer. And it amplifies any of the energies that it's around. So this stone is literally one i would have to recommend for everybody some of the other cool pieces i have this is atlantisite i only have it in a very small obelisk because it's extremely rare but it's got stitch tight which is this crystal this crystal is stitch tight which is the purple bit and it's also got serpentine which is the green part i also have serpentine on its own this is what serpentine looks like on its own. So you can see these two crystals are mixed together to make this one. Now, isn't that insane? This crystal only comes out of one place in the world and that is Australia. So it's extremely rare. And normally you find them separate. Stitch tight in itself is quite rare. Serpentine, you can get it in quite a lot of places. But to find stitch tie and serpentine together is insane. I love it. This is what's known as anhydrite. Oh my gosh. Like, you have to just look at the rainbows. Anhydrite, again, comes from only one place in the world. Oh, there it is. Look at the rainbows there. One place in the world, and that is Madagascar. I just love its fluorescent purple and typically you will find calcite in it but this is quite special because this is orange calcite not typical calcite and I just I love it and what anhydrite means is without water the crystal basically gets dehydrated and it makes this formation and it's just incredible this is so cool because this is pink amethyst. Normally pink amethyst is pink, but this is a lilac variation of it. And I love it because it's a sphere. Like it's so rare to find pink amethyst in a sphere formation. And I love that it's got these caves. And this is raw pink amethyst. If you look more on the inside here, it's so cool, so gemmy. If I move up to this beloved section here, so this is what's known as a sunset labradorite, which is the same as this one, but obviously it's got a different color flash. The sunset flash is the rarest one. Most people will tell you purple is, but purple isn't. The sunset one is the rarest. We've got a salmon jasper tower, howlite tower. This is what's known as optical calcite. This is a giant sphere. And we're gonna pick it up because it's gonna knock everything over. This is what's known as pineapple quartz. What's cool about it is this is like a regular quartz, but it grows out of these little tiny little clusters and it looks like a pineapple. It's also known as candle quartz. And again, only comes out of Madagascar. Lemon calcite, this is so pretty. It looks edible to me. So this is citrine. Citrine is incredibly rare and the best citrine comes out of Brazil. And this bit on the side is what's known as garden quartz or lodolite, which are 
inclusions and the inclusions could be anything from sand to feldspar to bits of chlorite but lodolite is incredibly rare and what's cool about lodolite is it comes from the word loda which means sand inclusion so not only is lodolite rare it's in citrine and citrine in itself is extremely rare it's also one of the most faked crystals out in the market and what a lot of people do with citrine is they'll get amethyst like this amethyst and they'll heat treat it so that it goes to an orangey yellow color and sell it as citrine but citrine naturally looks quartzy i also have smoky quartz this is really cool because this is a lemurian smoky quartz i'll tell you a bit more about lemurians when i go on to a bigger piece but what's so special about this piece is if you look closely these triangles here are what are known as record keepers and what record keepers are said to have is ancient knowledge so if you meditate with a crystal that has record keepers in it <clears throat> my throat's going you're said to unlock ancient knowledge, the Akashic records, things that your spirit guides might want you to know. From the Feldspar family, which is the same as Labradorite, not the same, but same family. Look at that flash. Gorgeous. And on both sides. Love it. Peach Moonstone is all about femininity. If you've got bad PMS, bad periods, you want to have some Peach Moonstone. Also, if you're trying to have kids, Peach Moonstone is great for that as well. I want to take you to my skulls. So the funny thing is, I was never interested in skulls. I thought they were ugly. I thought they were kind of masculine and I thought that they were a bit intimidating. But the more you sort of get into crystals, the more you start enjoying different carvings and their meanings and wanting something a little bit different. Skulls are meant to connect you to your ancestors and past lives, which is freaking phenomenal. If you're into past life energy or anything like that, connections with the dead, spirit work, skulls are pretty incredible. I mean, the craftsmanship that goes into these is insane. This one here is Mukite Jasper, only comes out of one place in the world, which is Australia. The, I mean, the markings on it are insane. I love it. If I show you my other one, this is what's known as pyrite, also fool's gold. I mean, pyrite isn't particularly rare. However, this is Peruvian pyrite, which is the best pyrite in the world. And pyrite is notoriously known to be difficult to carve. And if you ever find a pyrite skull, I'm telling you guys, snap it up because they are not easy to come by. I was so happy I could get my hands on this. I freaking love it. Look at all the druzies. Oh. The last skull I have, I only have three at the moment, hopefully planning to get more, is Blue Chalcedony. Now this is another one of my absolute favorite crystals. Blue Chalcedony comes out of Turkey and I just love the smoothness of it and how they've literally gone into all the details. And Blue Chalcedony is another one that's notoriously rare to carve. So the fact that I managed to get a skull in it is pretty insane. My beloved Ocean Jasper Sphere, I tell you, this is one of the most incredible pieces in my collection. What I love about it is that it looks like a planet. And Emily, the woman I got it from, said that she knows it was meant for me because when she went to her supplier, it was there. She didn't get it. Then she went back to her supply a few days later and it was still there. And normally when you see crystals like this, people snap them up because they're so unique. So the fact that it was still there waiting for me and then I bought it, yeah, I just think is insane. This, I'm not even gonna take it out of its stand because last time I took it out of its stand, it took me a good 10 minutes to put it back. This is a raw Lemurian. I also have it in a sphere, which I'll show you here. <laughs> the sphere's a lot easier to pick up. And Lemurians, they're known for their etching. So you can see these striations here. These are natural. There's nothing been carved or anything. This is obviously polished. So it's polished into a sphere shape. Obviously when it's polished, you lose the stripes or the striations or the markings, the etchings, whatever you want to call it. People have different names for it. But when it is polished, it has insane rainbows. Like Although it looks like clear quartz, you will never ever get clear quartz with rainbows like this. 
Lemurians are known for how many fractures, internal fractures they have, which is said to be the wisdom and knowledge trapped inside them. And basically the story goes, if you know anything about star systems, the Lemurians are one of the oldest star seeds, the star systems out there. And it's said that they were once on this earth, bringing their knowledge to us. When they left, they planted their knowledge in this area in Brazil, which is now known as Lemuria, named after the Lemurians. And the crystals that grow out of the Lemuria mine are the only ones that can be called Lemurians because they're the only ones that have this striation formation and this internal fracturing that causes the insane rainbows. If you meditate with Lemurians, they're extremely powerful, literally one of my favorite, 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 favorite crystals. I have so much Lemurians in my collection. With this being another one, this is a polished free form on a stand because I love it so much. I wanted a huge piece of Lemurian to just stare at. I love trollite. Trollite, another one that comes out of Brazil. I've got this yoga girl here as well that I couldn't pass up because just calming vibes. You guys know I love yoga. What drew me to trollite is the fact that when I touch it, I instantly feel the energy. There's something about this crystal that just calms me so much. I love it. It reminds me of the sea, of the ocean. Speaking of sea and ocean, I'm going to tell you a bit about Larimar. This crystal right here is so rare, like you can see it's tiny. <laughs> Comes out of one place in the world, which is the Dominican Republic. It's also known as dolphin stone because it literally looks like ripples in the water. This here is a slab of it. And I only have little pieces because if I was to get it big, not only would it cost me something I can't afford, but also it's like really hard to find in bigger pieces. So I only have these little pieces of it and I'm really happy to have it in my collection. This right here, Appetite. Oh, how I love Appetite. This comes out of Madagascar. It's got these lovely bits of shine to it. Cool vibes if you need to relax, help calm in the mind if you suffer with headaches. This is the stone for you. If I go a little bit in here, this is blue fluorite. So as I was saying, this is the Mexican one. This is the, the Chinese one. Blue fluorite is the hardest color to get in fluorite and Beijing fluorite is the best quality, but just be careful and be aware where you're buying your crystals from. Blue lace agate. This crystal is notoriously becoming harder and harder to find because the mine where it comes from has been mined so deep into the ground that it's become too dangerous for the miners to go there. So I'm pretty sure if it's not closed, it will be closed very soon. And so the prices of these have shot up so much. So if you do manage to get your hands on blue lace agate, go for it because this is definitely going to be a collector's piece or an investment piece, even though it's so small, but size doesn't really dictate much when it comes to crystals. My top shelf is predominantly pink amethyst. I am a pink amethyst fiend. I love it. There's something magical about it. So I've got pink amethyst towers, pink amethyst hearts, pink amethyst freeforms, pink amethyst spheres. I've got druzy pink amethyst, quartzy pink amethyst. You name it, I've got it. I love pink amethyst. I've even got a pink amethyst cloud up here. I mean, isn't that stunning? Cute. I mean, this one is literally a, 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 a grade. Like everyone is obsessed with this because it's like pink and red and it's got bits of quartz and bits of yellow and hematite and oh, incredible. Incredible. Pink amethyst is only found in Brazil and it's another one that's increasingly coming more expensive because there's such high demand for it. This is rose quartz. But this is special because it's Mozambique rose quartz. I mean, rose quartz is pretty easy to come by. Like this is your typical bog standard rose quartz in saying that 
it is very gemmy and rose quartz is a crystal I'm never going to stop buying. It is such a staple for anyone, for anyone's collection. So I highly recommend you get some rose quartz because it's all about love. Self-love, self-healing, loving those around you, loving energy, positive vibes. You want to get some rose quartz in your collection. However, <laughs> rose quartz comes in a variety of qualities and getting something this nice quality you can see just how gemmy and clear this is. Like you can look right through that, but you can see my hand. Getting it in this quality can be hard to find, especially when people use filters and such. This is Mozambique rose quartz, which is the highest type of rose quartz you could get. Plus it's carved, so it's extremely rare. And the dragon symbolizes courage in Chinese and good luck, courage and good luck. So you put that together with the rose quartz energy of love it's a powerful crystal just saying i have my rhodochrosite i tell you rhodochrosite is special the these two bits here as well love rhodochrosite <gasps> these are flower agates and what's so cool about flower agate it was only discovered in 2019 and that was the time when we started having the pandemic, the coronavirus. That crystal is all about blooming and starting fresh and new beginnings and helping you to overcome hard times. Gemologists believe that we discovered it because that was the time we were supposed to discover it. It's really cool, really fascinating stuff if you read about flower agate. Gonna move along, more rhodochrosite. This is what's known as crazy lace out of Mexico, but it's pink. Rhodonite, I love Rhodonite, comes out of Peru. Really beautiful crystal. And then these are my quartzes. I've got Diamantina. This is Diamantina, but in a larger point. And this is Diamantina in clusters. Diamantina is a bit like Lemurian, where it is believed that a star system put their knowledge into the crystal. And it was in that particular Diamantina region, hence why the mine is called the Diamantina mine. One of the reasons why it's called Diamantina is because it's supposed to resemble diamonds. It is so clear that it resembles diamonds. I also have rainbow amethyst here, pink sugar rainbow amethyst. This is pink moonstone. This is pink moss agate. So like the purple one down here, this is the pink variety. Your typical moss agate is going to be blue and green, but when you find other colours like purple and pink, then you know you're on tour winner. Absolutely gorgeous. Look at all that pink banding. Love. Then up here, I've got more trollite, trollite flame. Flames have been my new favourite shape. I've got selenite, both sphere and tower. For anyone starting a crystal collection, selenite is an absolute must. Even for people who have big crystal collection, because selenite is cleansing, it will cleanse all your crystals. And it's probably one of the most affordable crystals out there, purely because it doesn't take as long to form. To form something this size, this is a huge sphere. I think it's 14 centimeters, it takes a month. Whereas to form blue lace agate, this is tiny, takes thousands of years. <laughs> Wild, right? It's mad how crystals work. This is Orca Agate from Madagascar, blue calcite. These are Moroccan clear quartz geodes, love them. These are also extremely affordable. If you're looking for a big piece that will shine in your collection at a good price, you wanna get your hands on some Moroccan geodes. More pink amethyst up here, pink amethyst slab. Strawberry quartz, oh, the glitter on this. This was one of my first crystals. I think you gave it to me as a birthday present, didn't you, Chris, this one? More Thunder Bay Amethyst. This is gorgeous because it's got like sparkly bits. It's the same as this one down here. I tell you guys, when I find a rare crystal that I love, I go all out. My beloved Amethyst Portal. Amethyst Portals, although you can find them quite easily in the market. It is not easy to find an amethyst portal with this depth of a purple, with this perfect oval circle shape, with that perfect large points. Oh, when I tell you this, this is the most gorgeous amethyst, I've literally had people message me on Instagram asking me if they can buy it off me. I'm not selling it, people. I love my portal. 
And if you're watching, you know who you are. <laughs> Just have to show you my fireplace pieces because they are gorgeous. This is what's known as rainbow moonstone. This is what I'd say is a good example of a raw piece. You can see the little flashes there. It's gorgeous and it's massive. It's really good for communication, especially with the afterlife or other worlds. Plus, it's really good if you're trying to get animals to get on with each other. Massive black tourmaline. I've put it in the fireplace because it looks like a huge fire log. This is a crystal everybody needs in their collection. Obviously, you don't need one this big. Black tourmaline is a protection stone. So I have a piece of black tourmaline in my hallway, on my entranceway, in the bedroom, basically in every room because when people come in and out of your house, their energy is around you. You want to protect your aura field from theirs and even protects you from holding on to negative energies or thinking negative thoughts. This is what's known as violet agate. Because if you look on the side, there's violet. It is the rarest type of agate you can get that I'm aware of. I just think it looks gorgeous. It's literally the same height as this rainbow moonstone. I love symmetry. And then the last thing I'll show you is this gorgeous druzy agate. What I loved about this piece is that it reminds me of the evil eye. So I just feel like the evil eye is watching over me. Cleanse my energy with my Lemurian. I hope this video was interesting. I hope you enjoyed looking at my crystal collection. I hope you learned something. Myself and Coco are gonna say peace out. Thank you for being here fam. We love you and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye. Bye.